Don't you even want freedom? A flashback to start things off. Are you going to live out the rest of your life as a slave without the rights of a real man? In that case, you're no different from me, trapped inside this stuffy flask. Wow. It was always there from the beginning. Basically, since the beginning of the show, my theory has been that all of the evil in the show will be human evil. And while the homunculus and the flask is sort of a question mark in terms of its origin, or how exactly they created it from Hohenheim's blood, and although there is something non-human about it, I think ultimately that is correct, that it is human evil. Father, it turns out, is very human. And there are so many ways we see this, right? Like, he splits himself into very human sins, first of all, who interestingly have a range of very human emotions that are not limited to their, their main sin. We see frustration about his limits, we see frustration about his lack of control or autonomy in his own life, which, thinking about it after seeing this scene, makes perfect sense because he's sort of reflecting something about Hohenheim in that Hohenheim or I guess Slave 23 or whatever he was called at the time is just this person with no autonomy in his life whatsoever. He's saying Hohenheim is the same as him being trapped in something like a flask but it goes the other way too. He is something very much like a human that is just frustrated with his existence. An existence that is limited and tragic and frustrating but I think one of the big parts of the show is that that's not the whole assessment. That's just the, the starting point maybe and it's the missing of the other things based largely on pride, I guess, that is one of the major causes of Father's, or the Dwarf's, ultimate evil. I love these openings, or these lack of openings. It really feels like a movie. Episode 63, The Other Side of the Gateway. There you go, punch him some more. <laughs> I don't understand! I'm glad we get a little more of this. How can a mere human, a meager alchemist, with his bare hands? He's really en enjoying that, that arm. <laughs> Thank you, Al. No, my beautiful abs. Pull yourself together, damn it. Stand on your feet, moron. <laughs> this poor random soldier. Oh no, and Green was distracted. Be a good son. Cuz he was trying to help that soldier. Oh, he cares about Ling. They're like bros now. Let's fight him together. <laughs> That's more like it. Very satisfying. Oh, he tricked him, you son of a. It can't end this way. <laughs> oh, you fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. You know what this is. <laughs> I love how he's still acting like he's, he's evil. That was the one and only lie of my life. No, wait. Don't do this. Hey, Lord Vaughn. Later. Wait, no. No, Greed! Oh, <laughs> I love how they all care about Greed so much. <laughs> I finally got away from that annoying brat. I love how he's keeping up this charade till the very end. Chuh, you thought I cared about you? No, I'm Greed the Avaricious. And I just really wanted to make a sacrifice because I love you all. I mean, because I'm Greed the Avaricious. <laughs> Remember that time you turned me into juice? It might have had something to do with that. I've reversed the ultimate shield you gave me and transformed your body into the most fragile carbon there is! <laughs> wow, he turned God into a pencil. Amazing. Oh, I've had enough. Wow. That's all I really need. They gave me everything I could want. <laughs> Thank you. And goodbye, my friends. Yeah, well, for a second he had it all, I guess. If there was any doubt that homunculi were human, or at least human enough to have a range of human experiences and experience life, Greed definitely proving otherwise, he ended up getting closure on his sin. And he's not really the first, right? I feel like Bradley had a little bit of that too, before he died. And one of the things those two have in common is that they both had a life outside of father. So did Pride, I guess, but Pride is pretty directly father, so... Greed spending time with actual people in the world seemed to round him out in that way. And sort of complete his arc. Greed is the most like literal example of 
the trope. It's about the friends you meet along the way, right? Like that is actually his whole thing. One of my favorite moments from Greed was when he had the conversation with Ed on the stairwell. And I can't remember exactly what he said, but I think his point was something along the lines of the fact that Greed is not bad. And that's something that I strongly agree with. You know, I think Greed's story, Greed's arc is sort of how things have to go. Greed is a very direct representation of something that's happening to a lot of the characters in the show. Most, if not all of the major characters are seeking something that they long for. And that longing is not completely healthy. There's always something a little bit unstable about this desire. But what ends up happening is that feeling is so strong, it pushes them out into situations where their ideologies and their limits are tested. And it's that process that makes them great. It's that journey that makes Ed such a powerful character and helped him refine his ideals. And I think in that sense, desire is one of the most important elements of finding meaning in life. Because in a way, desire charts a course for you to follow. And the destination is probably not at all what we think it will be, but it's a pathway to some unseen destiny, if that makes sense. And I think that is one of the main points of these shows and the hero's journey as a whole is that it is true that the thing you're looking for was inside you the whole time. It is about the friends you make along the way. But I feel like just telling yourself that is not enough. There's a difference between hearing that and really understanding it. And I think the journey is necessary to get there. The journey is often necessary to understand what that even means on some kind of deeper level. And the reason for that is insight is not just your thought. It's your thoughts connected to the actual world and only real experience will refine you so that your values actually reflect the world and pair with the world rather than just being like a flat ideology. But where else do you start? You know, where else do you start that hero's journey without a desire? And so greed is a very direct representation of something that I feel is very real and also very necessary. <laughs> He's going to be brittle. Yeah. Oh my, I was not expecting that. So much for a container. Oh no, my, my beautiful stone. abs. You destroyed my stone. And that too, my stone, yeah. Go back to nothing, homunculus. But why? I just wanted to understand this world's knowledge. You understood so little. I just wanted to be free. Free to know. Come to think of it, it's interesting that he's so fixated on knowledge because that's kind of how Ed started out, right? It was like thinking about one of the early episodes with Leto, the sun god Leto. Ed is all about it's just science, right? Science is all there is and alchemy is all there is. But Ed ends up having a lot of faith, you know, in his way. Why did you refuse to join me? Why, God? How did I disappoint you? You, you were, were incapable of believing in yourself. <laughs> no faith. You stole your power from others. You rejected your human origins and chose to covet the power of what you call God. You never grew beyond your days in the flask. Did you truly think you'd become superior to humans by removing your seven desires? Don't make me laugh. What's wrong with that? I only wanted to obtain perfection. I wanted this world's knowledge for my own. Why should I be punished for that? What's wrong with craving knowledge? What's wrong with seeking perfection? <laughs> the silent treatment, the ultimate punishment. Who the hell do you think you are? Who am I? One name you might have for me is the world. Or you might call me the universe. Or perhaps God. Or perhaps the truth. I am all, and I am one. I am also you. So, of course, this also means that I am you. This portal's I'm the blank. Truth of your despair, the inescapable price of your boastfulness. <laughs> Humans who would dare to play God must pay a steep price for their arrogance. That is truth. Speaking of arrogance, yeah. <laughs> and now, I will bestow upon you the despair you deserve. Oof. Truth is not very forgiving. <laughs> you brought this outcome upon yourself. What did I do wrong? What should I have done? <laughs> you simply must have seen the answer with your own eyes. That was pretty ruthless. 
I was thinking there might be some kind of redemption or something. Man, that was a packed conversation. So firstly, I think that that truth being directly confirmed Greed's point, right, about how the sins are not necessarily bad. Removing the sins doesn't make Father more, it makes him less because of the potential that exists in humanity based on what humanity is, which includes the sins. Then thinking about the punishment he receives, it initially seems like truth or God or whatever is punishing the dwarf, but it might not be so conscious or directed. It just might be like the natural other side to his behavior. Maybe this is the exchange. He talks about wanting to be free and how he can't bear to be bound anymore, but where were the bindings really? You know, the bindings were sort of self-inflicted, which I think is maybe what the truth is saying there. One question that comes to mind, you know, because I was just talking about how like desire is not bad, right? Desire can lead you to great things and is ultimately part of the call to action in becoming like a developed person. Father also was motivated by desire. So what makes him different from greed, you know? And where do those things go wrong? Because it doesn't always work out that way, right? Like people are motivated so strongly by desire that it can ruin them and cause tremendous damage to themselves and others. What is the difference? You know, when does it work out and when does it not? And truth maybe gives one potential answer there, which is discarding one's humanity or thinking oneself above anyone or anything or the natural order or seeing oneself as outside of a system, going against universal priorities, you know what I mean? Going way back to the one is all, all is one conversation. One idea I often have is that human values are largely a reflection of universal values. It seems like in some very remote and vague sense, the universe does value existence because things exist and things strive to exist. And that's not an accident, right? That is something that came about starting with just the order of the universe. And one thing you might take away from that that's way overly simplistic, but you know, sufficient for this conversation, I guess, is that the universe values potential. And I think one of the most identifiable virtues of humanity is potential. And so to discard humanity or to use humanity as a tool or to think that you as an individual or one individual has more value than the entire system or the entire species or one's community or whatever it is, is sort of the ultimate arrogance. My gut sense is that that runs counter to the, the sort of self-actualization that I'm talking about with the whole hero's journey thing and the path and answering the call and following your desire to learn your values and virtues, you know what I mean? The ultimate pride of father is thinking that he's outside of that system, that he's more valuable or can be more valuable than that because it's sort of the most valuable thing in some ways of looking at it. And even worse, by putting that train of thought into action, he does damage to that thing which has ultimate value and he doesn't allow himself to be part of that value. And so it seems very fitting in some way that he's relegated to be absolutely nothing. And having sat with this for a couple minutes, <laughs> I think that it's probably not like a God-directed punishment. It's just the other side of the coin for him. It's something that happens to him naturally to represent his sin. Meanwhile, Al. Oh boy. Captain, is it over? Did we win? Yes, sir. Although... Yes and no. Alphonse hasn't returned from the other side. I'm sorry. Wasn't worth it so if Alphonse sorry. doesn't come back. It's not your fault, mate. Ooh. Decision. Ed, Look at Ed trusting him. him. Take it. It's a philosopher's stone. Use it to bring him back. I can't. As much as I want to, I can't. I promised Al we'd never use a philosopher's stone. Al did it. <laughs> to be a way to get him back. Ed, I think, is sort of the ultimate in this conviction thing. He's the most committed. I did have sort of a weird feeling when Al used the Philosopher's Stone, and so I do feel somewhat validated by Ed saying that. It is sort of weird, you know, it is sort of a dark magic thing. To be clear, I would not at all begrudge him for using it. I would be very happy if he used it, in fact, because I want to see Al back. But that's not Ed, and so in that way it makes me happy. I feel very conflicted. There's gotta be. I believe in Ed's hey, damn it. Think it through. ability. Just keep thinking! Edward. <laughs> use my life for the toll. <gasps> no, use the Philosopher's Stone instead. I take it back. Shut up, you rotten father! You say something that dumb again, and I'll knock you out! <laughs> All I hear is love. There's gotta be some way! There has to be! You better get to it. You've got plenty of people waiting for you and your brother to get your bodies back. If you believe the possibility exists, then you should do whatever it takes. Exactly. I can't give up. There has to be some way. I know it. I know there is. I'm so on edge. I have no idea. Did he figure something out? Please, that would be so great. Oh, Al. Poor Al. <laughs> Ray, I didn't realize 
why she cared so deeply for Al. Where have you been? <laughs> Mr. Gorilla. The Briggs soldiers. The Major. Lon Fun. Ling. Teacher. Our father. <laughs> May. Stand back a little. I'm a little bit wary of this plan. What are you doing? Don't set me up. This is the slowest circle ever drawn in the show. It's a human transmutation circle. I'll be back in a few minutes. This is my last transmutation. Stand back and enjoy the show. Stop it! The confidence he has doing this. Alright. Even though I might regret it, I'm placing my faith in Ed. Full Metal Alchemist. Nice! I love that, even though it's very simple. Full Metal Aww. Alchemist. I take it you're here to retrieve your brother? Just how do you plan on pulling an entire human out of here? What's your payment? Do you intend to offer your own body? <laughs> yeah, I've got your payment right here. So go ahead and take it. This thing is my portal of truth. So I get to make the decision on how it's used. Is that right? <laughs> it's come to that. <laughs> and you're sure about this? You do realize that you'll never be able to perform alchemy again without your portal. I'm aware of that. He's trading his portal for Al. This portal. <laughs> I know it contains every secret alchemy has to offer. However, it's also led me astray. I saw the truth that lies within it, and I became convinced I could solve everything with alchemy. But I couldn't possibly have been more wrong. That was just arrogance. He's the You're opposite of to cast father. Aside, to lower yourself to a simple human? What do you mean lower myself? Simple human, it's right? Yeah, total opposite. Been. Just a simple human that couldn't save a little girl. Not even with alchemy. You're sure you'll be all right without it? Think carefully now. Ed. Full metal! Edward! Ed. Edward Elric! Ed. 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 Who even needs alchemy when I've got them? <laughs> <laughs> You've done it! That's the right answer! Good wow. job! You beat me! When you beat Go God. Ahead. The back door is right over there. <laughs> Goodbye, Edward Elric. That was crazy, Al. It was crazy. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Now let's go home together. Damn, they pulled it off. How did I not see that coming? That was the perfect thing. I remember I talked about that way in the beginning about how Ed already had everything he needed and that he risked losing the things that actually mattered due to the way he was thinking about things. That it was all on his shoulders that he could fix everything and very directly it was him realizing that that actually was the ultimate bargaining chip for him getting what he wanted. It's sort of perfect. There is a lot of stuff that's particular to the system, right? But ultimately it's him realizing what he has that gives him what he wants. You know, it's it's exactly right, I think. And it's so nice having both his interaction with truth and the dwarf's interaction with truth. Because in wanting everything and being devoid of humanity, the dwarf has nothing, and Ed, in giving everything up and embracing his full humanity, has everything. If that isn't the lesson right there, and it's not empty. It's not empty because they both went on their journeys. It's not just an idea thrown out by somebody, you know, sitting around. It's Ed who has 
experienced all of life pretty much, right? Which includes his own limitations. You know, I wasn't able to save a girl. There's just so much to this, you know, like that point of pain. That's something he said a lot earlier. Like, oh, I failed. You know, I failed. Even though it's the same statement, it's the same statement. It means two totally different things. Initially, it's a point of conflict. But here when he says it, it's a point of acceptance. It's a point of understanding of his limitations and his willingness to part with the image he has of himself, the delusion he has of himself, of his own importance and his own ability which is what kept him going, but was incomplete. You know, it was one of those pillars that gets you through trauma, but it's not a full thing. It's just a placeholder. And the show has become Ed and a lot of other characters stripping away those placeholders and those things that are sort of artificial and getting to what is actually the most beautiful about themselves and their experience. All that stuff aside, it's such a relief just that they got their wish because I, I so was not sure that would happen. And part of the reason why I was not convinced that would happen is because of the danger I saw in Ed and Al about the way they were approaching their journey as if it was all they had. When they already had so much, which was obvious to, you know, probably every viewer of the show. Hey, he's waking up. How are Relief. You, you okay? Zampano and Darius. Get this guy some food. Here. Dad. Hey. And all I've got to live. <laughs> yes. It's so warm. He can feel again. <laughs> and you already have a girlfriend. <laughs> We all were. I bet. We all were, May. Sorry. It was wrong of me to put you through that. It's okay now. Thank you. Damn, and they get to have, like, a life? And they have a father? General Kremen and General Edison have been apprehended as the two lead conspirators. Huh. All of their opposing forces have now been disarmed. I'm guessing the public's not going to get the full truth. King Bradley and his son Selim tragically lost their lives amidst the day's mm. turmoil. Spin. Colonel Mustang released an official statement that he would carry on with the Fuhrer's wishes and that he would personally oversee all matters of national security. Well, he did it. You are the one who gave me blood, right? Don't you even want freedom? Hohenheim? Okay, then. What is it that makes you happy? Well, I'd hate to be guilty of asking too much. <laughs> but I'd be happy if I could just leave this flash. Hilarious in hindsight. Asking too much. You were born of my blood. Dwarf in the flask. Right. Homunculus. It was part of Hohenheim. In the end, you and I were still as one. And I'm... Mr. Hohenheim. I personally saw to it that your sons were admitted to the hospital. Thank you. I'm grateful for your help. Nonsense. I am the one who is truly grateful. We are all in debt to the efforts of Edward and Alphonse. Hohenheim deserves some credit too. Not just for Ed and Al. Thank you. He's not looking too good, though. I really want to go back and watch that flashback episode now. That conversation between Hohenheim and him himself. Visiting Trisha's grave. You definitely redeemed yourself as a father. <laughs> Hello, Trisha. I'm home. And he fulfilled his promise to come back. I think at first I mistakenly assumed Hohenheim was just sort of wandering the earth looking for his purpose. But now I know that he was working just as hard as father just, you know, to do the opposite. So get this. Ed actually called me his father. Although he did preface it with rotten. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Living through all of these endless years, I always felt like I'd been struck with a curse. Just give him a little I more time, at least. And we had our sons, and I suddenly felt blessed, grateful for the life I had. I've had a fulfilling life. Thanks to you, it's been enough. I guess this is Thank what he wanted. You, Trisha. I got a little bit ahead of myself with the happiness. And now, believe it or not, I actually want to keep on living. Of course you do. I guess I'm pretty hopeless. <laughs> Hohenheim! Oh no. I didn't know you were back. Silly old fool. Well, at least you died with a smile on your face, my friend.
Nice tribute to Hohenheim. Well, I guess the rain stopped for Hohenheim. Well, to say that episode was amazing is an understatement. Obviously, it's very moving. I'm so thrilled that Al is back at least. It hurts losing Hohenheim, but it's sort of a bittersweet pain, you know, because he accomplished what he wanted to accomplish. He had his family. He reconciled with Ed, at least to the extent that he did. He saved the world. He found purpose. He did get more and he did become free, which was the challenge put to him by the dwarf in the flask, but he did it in a way that is beautiful and satisfying. And he had a long journey that finally came to an end. And so it's it's not a tragedy. It's a great story. The tragedy is father. You know, the tragedy is father returning to nothing, never having any real understanding, it seems. I love father's end and I love his conversation with truth, especially contrasted with Ed's. Ed really came through and I feel like my faith was justified. <laughs> As was everyone Everyone else's faith in him since everyone had faith in him this whole time and now al's back and al still has alchemy right <laughs> Ed can always ask him for help if he needs it. The trading of the portal is so packed, I feel like I haven't even begun to understand it yet. I feel like I haven't even started thinking about it. So I'm gonna digest that for a little bit and I'll probably talk more about it in the final episode coming up very soon. I'm happy that we have one more episode left because I feel like some shows would have ended it right there or just done like a quick 30 second epilogue, but I want like a long epilogue episode. I wanna see everybody living their lives and you know, being happy. And I wanna see the aftermath because there's been so much build up for this point. It's really sad to think I'll only get to see these characters for one more episode. I guess there are the over but to my knowledge, the final episode is the furthest point in time, right? That's sort of the end of the story. I sort of don't want to watch it. <laughs> I want to have it lingering there, but watch it, I will. So I'll see you next time for the grand finale of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Mm -hmm.